Okay, time to put this thing back together. Um, so for painting, I had one screw holding these two sh shell halves together, just so it was easier to uh, handle. Uh, the first thing we want to do is put these grip halves back onto the shell. And go this together like that. And have to grab the um, these breach release levers and put them back in. Uh, these go. Yeah, this this one goes on this side. Um, this larger chunk of plastic goes on the front and then this bar goes across the top. So, whoops. To show how this goes, here's the, uh, the piece of plastic goes on the inside of the shell. This little ball at the front goes underneath this black cylinder in the shell, like that. It's so that this piece has a little bit of a spring to it. Lost a screw, there we go. And I'm just going to grab this guy and hold it under the shell. Like that. So when I'm putting these screws in for this lever, I want to make sure that they're a little bit loose because I don't want this to be too tight. If it's too tight, then the uh, this little piece of plastic won't be springy like it should be, and you'll have issues with um, the breech not staying locked in the rear position. So yeah, I, I want this to be loose. I also want it to be probably more loose than normal because I don't want to prematurely scratch off all my paint from actuating the, the, the breech release. Uh, so do the same thing on this side. So again, this small orange plastic cylinder goes underneath this black plastic cylinder like that. And I'll put this on the bottom of the shell again. Try to line up the screw into the little hole. There. That's good. Okay, so next thing is I'm going to grab the plunger and just drop it into the right side of the shell. I need to grab this little rubber uh, shock pad. It sits up here under the rail. There is a um, one side of the shock pad has this little hole in the center. The other side does not. That hole goes over this little feature in the shell. So like that. Uh, barrel just sits in there like that. Um, what else? So this is the the catch for the breech, and it just friction fits into the two screw holes for the uh, breech release. 
and it goes in in this orientation with the little like this little notch goes on top and just push it in like that and so when the free or when the the barrels in it sort of cl clips in um what else oh here's the trigger The, the front of the trigger up here goes onto this metal pin that's in the shell and then it sits inside this little trench in the uh, barrel release. Just put this in there. And grab the spring for the barrel. Better that way? Yeah, okay. Uh, what else? Okay, all this stuff that goes in the in the grip. Let's just take care of that. Um, I need to put this metal bar in, or actually I need to put this in first. This white little uh, thing with a spring the spring goes onto the long side like that and then the shell uh you need to so that this this the short side with the the collar goes faces down like that basically and i need to push it into this little seat in the shell and that's to make it so it's spring loaded <laughs> nice spring loaded so that when the uh i guess it's i don't know the catch there's a there's a um, one other piece is actuates against it but anyway you want it to be spring loaded from the bottom uh after that is this metal bar the short side goes in the top. Actually, I should have put this before the trigger. But the this side of the bar goes into this hole on the trigger, but from the back. So I'm just going to fish that in there. This goes like that. Next is... This guy, I think, which goes this way, it just drops in there. Should we put this one first? Or no, I'm wrong. This one goes in first. Uh, the hole in the center goes over this pin. Uh, it goes this way. Like so. Now I put this on top of it. This one just kind of sits loose in there. That's just how it goes. Uh, here's the, the catch, I think. Sits at the very bottom. Right here, but I have to pull on the plunger just a little bit, I think. No? Okay. Um, yeah, it's this one. It's kind of a little bit of pain to get in there. I don't know why it's not working. There. So there's a little catch. The The angle side on this little guy is meshed with the angle side on this larger orange piece. I don't know how visible that is. Uh, here's the safety. It can just slip in under the trigger like so. And now is the knowing part. Um, so I'm going to grab this spring and put it over this screw post. And now I need to grab my two 3D printed parts. So here's the rail. It just kind of sits in here like that. And these, these things kind of want to fall out when the shell is open, which is a, the annoying thing. Here's a little 
flap thing, 3D printed flap. Okay, so I, I've got that in there. Now I need to try to close the blaster with the other half of the shell without anything popping out of place. And I'm just gonna try to line up the rail first. And I'm holding this part down with my hands. And I'm gonna squeeze the shell shut. I think I've got everything situated, basically. Whoops. Um, before putting the screws in, I'm just gonna close the breech and see that it actually opens and closes. So that's good. Now I'm going to put all the screws back in. Uh, we don't use this piece. This gets replaced. It used to be down here. So you can just toss that. And with all the screws, there should be three long ones. And all the other ones are the same size. The long screws go here. Oops here and here so those two and this one um, we should also have spare screws when we're done because there were two screws that held the bottom of the ball storage that just don't exist anymore so you know having some spare screws is pretty handy for other projects if you need them um, I think I'm gonna do all of these screws up and I'll be back once those are all in the blaster okay so I've got all the screws back in my knockout now I can start installing my printed parts so the first thing I want to do is on the left side of this muzzle clamp piece, there's this deeper hole and I wanna put this brass insert into that hole. Uh, there's two ways you can do this. You can uh, use a soldering iron to heat set the insert into the hole, or if you don't have a soldering iron, you can do what I'm about to show you. So I'm gonna take my uh, M3 bolt that I'm gonna be using for this clamp, but I'm gonna put the insert all the way on it. Like that. Then I'm gonna take this and put it into the hole with the, the or put it into the side with a deeper hole. So the bolt will keep the insert perfectly aligned with the hole. And now I'm just gonna use a bar clamp to press the in the brass insert into its its a uh, hole. One more. Okay. Whoops. So now, when I remove the bolt, my brass insert stays in the 3D print. There we go. So this means that when I put the bolt in from its correct side, it'll have brass threads that won't wear out. Um, so the next thing I wanna do is push this onto, or actually no, I wanna put the inline clip into the barrel because it won't fit all the way through the muzzle. So this has to go in next. Uh, so I'm simply going to push it in gently and I'm going to try to, to stop when I feel that I've pressed down on this spring-loaded uh, thing in there.
okay? And I'm just going to hold down the breech release. Oh, went too far. Yeah, it should be just about there. Like, there's this little ridge inside the breech, and it should be almost lined up with that. Um, so now I'm going to put this on and snap in place. And now, uh, if your inline clip is in the right depth, then it should be almost like a little bit shy of the length of the suppressor when it's thread it all the way on, so that looks about right. So I'm going to put this M3 bolt in there. Okay, and it should clamp onto the inline clip. So now I'm going to turn on thread on my suppressor. Uh, I find that when these two parts are freshly printed, the threads can be pretty tight. So what I end up doing is I thread it on and then thread it off over and over again until the threads loose, loosen up. So I don't want to force it on to a point where it'll never come back off. So just wearing in the, the threads a little bit. That should be fine. Um, and yeah, so you can see the inline clip is sitting inside the suppressor in that little divot. And that should be done. Uh, so a couple extra things that I like to put on my knockouts. Um, I personally find this trigger to be too thin and it kind of digs into my, my finger as I'm playing. So I made this little uh, trigger pad and it just simply snaps onto the trigger. So it just, I don't know, just makes it more comfortable for me. Uh, I also don't want this priming uh, blob, so I'm going to take that off. With these two screws. And replace that with an M5 bolt that goes through the hole in the bottom of the grip. Um, the files for this trigger pad and these two little uh, 3D printed grip T-pull handle things are in the description if you want to download them. Uh, they're completely optional. They're just, it's what I prefer for knockouts. Uh, the, the fit on these two is very tight because I don't want them <laughs> freely rotating as I'm playing. And I'm going to put a nylon lock nut on the end of that. Where's my... There we go. Nice and tight. And that is my finished TKO.